started in January and then God was saying that he wants to do five of this month. So um, this is the fourth Sunday of the month and we're going to continue with the teaching on fire. And if you're teaching about the fire, you're also teaching about the glory. And you have to have the glory and the impartation of that glory in you. You hear me? Yeah. Much of the church is, doesn't have any glory because they, they, they don't recognize the fullness of God's glory. Now, something I need to say, uh, you're going to see more of this glory than you have ever seen before. Until the time when the Lord comes back and he comes in glory and power, uh, it's, it's upon us and it's ours. So uh, let's have a word of prayer and then we'll start get into some things about the fire and the glory, okay? Is that all right? Welcome visitors. Welcome you that are here for the second or third time. Oh, welcome all of you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before your throne. We thank you that uh, everything that you want to say today is coming forth through me and through the others that you may use. And to you be all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. And Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to help me because you know I can't do this by myself. I don't want to do it by myself. In the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Uh, first thing I need to tell you is that there's somebody in here uh, on the right side of your head, and especially down here in your neck, that uh, you're in you're in a lot of pain and a lot of hurt, and God wants to take that away today. Whenever you come, uh, just uh, believe God that it's going to move and it's going to leave you in Jesus' name. I, I think this, the reason I'm not calling out anybody is I think this is tied to past relationships and uh, has something to do with, with uh, something that somebody has said to you. Uh, the other thing I have is uh, Proverbs 3 5. Uh, this is not part of my message, but I do want to read that again to you. I know you're familiar with it, but I want you to turn to it like you've never seen it before, okay? And uh, I want to start with verse 1 and then just read down to there. Uh, Proverbs chapter 3. Uh, my son, forget not my law, but let, my, let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them on the tablets of the table of thine heart. So shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Then, verse 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Get your own understanding out of there. In all your ways, Acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Amen? All right. So I'm going to continue because God is telling me to tell you that you keep trusting him. Don't turn away from him. If you do something wrong, run to Jesus. Don't run away from him. But trust in the Lord with all your heart. Make sure your heart is in what you're doing. And get your mind out of it. Yeah, it's cutting out of it. Yeah. So we're still not working right. Uh, Jim, if you guys have something else to do, we'll let you try it and uh, see what happens. Um, uh, one, I'm on number four. 
Can you turn this one on for me? All right, it's on. No. Hello. Switch at the bottom. What now? Okay, it's on now. It's on now. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, we'll, we'll get there. Uh, I have I have a couple of directions that I have to go in today, <coughs> so uh, just be patient with me, please, and uh, let's let God do what God wants to do. And there's there's two or three people in here that God is already talking to me about. So where I want you to go to start with is uh, the glory of God, and I want you to go to Psalm number eight. Verse 4 and 5. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou hast visited him? Verse 5. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Now, the crown that you receive from God's glory is, is more. Uh, it, it's his presence, it's his glory, it's his fire. The honor that God has given you is for you to walk in the brightness and the shine of his presence. Okay? Now, if you go with me to Ezekiel 10 4, uh, Ezekiel 10 4, then the glory of the Lord went up from the cherubim and stood over the threshold of the house and the house was filled with the cloud. And sometimes they call it a cloud, sometimes they call it uh, other names. But it's all got to do with God's glory. Uh, sometimes they call it smoke. It's still the glory of God. And when he decides to fill a house with his smoke or his glory or his presence, you're not going to stand up in it. And when he decides to touch you with it, he's going to touch you with it and it'll change your life. Okay? He wants you full of his glory in whatever type of possession he has for you. He wants it to be empowered by his presence and he wants you to have the light of that glory he wants you to have the cloud of that glory, and he wants you to have the fire of that glory. Amen. Okay. Now, they're not hard to come into. It's just a matter of yielding to him. Verse 5, For thou, Lord, hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Now, the crown that God has given you does not just cover your head. It covers your whole being. Hello. It's not about just wearing a crown up here. He does give you crowns, plural, and at different times. And the crown that God has given you that you may be wearing of gold, uh, God says, never take it off. It's not why you're down here. Because it's your authority in the earth. When you get to heaven, they'll put it down at the feet of Jesus because they're worshiping Jesus. But when you worship him down here, you wear that crown and you expect that crown to bring authority to you and work through you. Amen. Amen. All right. But the honor, the honor is the key to your possession of light. Your honor is the key to God telling you to shine. And in Isaiah 60, he says, Arise, shine. For thy light has come. And the Lord is the only one that can give you that shine. You, you shine brighter than the noonday sun. Hello. You can't get into all of his glory. You never will. Because it's too bright. But you can get a lot of it while you're down here. You'll get some more of it when you get up there. Praise God. 
All right, and, and I ask you to go to Ezekiel, see the end of that verse, verse 4. He says, uh, uh, well, let's let me read the whole thing. Then the glory of the Lord went up uh, from the cherub and stood over the threshold of the house, and the house was filled with the cloud, and the court was full of the brightness of the Lord's glory. See that? That's Ezekiel uh, 4, uh, 10, 4. Now, there's other translations that say uh, that it was full of the brightness of the Lord's honor. Okay? So they're translating that word as glory as honor. So God gave you both glory and honor. He wants you to not only walk in his presence, he wants you to shine. He wants you to be something that's outstanding and looking. And that shine is not only to work on your flesh, but it's to work in, your, in everything you do. Why? So that God can prosper you and other people come along and they look at you and they say, well, how are you doing this? How are you, how are you making it? How are you doing this? And then you got an open door to tell them about you and the Lord. Okay. Now, uh, where I want you to go today, where we're going to end up is in Isaiah 6 and uh, go through 1 through 7. But uh, before I can do that, I've got to tell you about the glory and the translation of this glory. Uh, in, in the Greek is the word doxa, D-O-X-A. Some of you heard me say that before. Okay. Uh, if, if you go study about the glory and you look up that word in the Vines Expository Dictionary, you'll get a whole page. Look, you'll, you'll take one of these pages and type it out and it'll be God telling you about his glory and it'll be translated into the Greek word doxa, D-O-X-A. Okay, so I can't cover it all in one session. You know, and we've already had three and we haven't been in this yet. But, but the glory is here, the fire is here, and God is using both of them. Now, he used both of them in the Old Testament when the children of Israel got the Red Sea and he was blocking out Egypt. They were a cloud by day to keep them cool and they were a fire by night that's still a cloud but it was a fire by night to keep them warm. Okay? And these were people who were already murmuring about God. Why do they get out of Egypt? I mean, we, we had this and we had that over there. We don't have any of that out here. You know, they started griping. As soon as they got out of there, they didn't know any better. Okay? But instead of griping, what we're going after is the glory. And there's a couple of you I'm going to call you by name because the Lord has told me to do that. And, and, and he just added one when we got here this morning. Now, doxa is, is the honor resulting from a good opinion. So the glory is God's opinion of himself and it's also his opinion of you and I. I want you in my glory. I created you for my glory. God told me that in 2016. He says, you tell my people I've created them to walk in my glory. The opinion that God has is, is, is his nature and the acts of God in self-manifestation. So he will manifest, manifest today and he will bring this glory to us because it's his opinion that I want you. And I'm coming after you. Okay? That's not going to stop. That grace is knocking at the door, and God is going to keep pushing you into his word and pushing you into his spirit, and he's going to get you in every form and every fashion that he wants you, and he's going to pull you into things you don't even know about yet. Okay. Now, the second thing I want you to hear about this doxa, this glory, uh, 
what he is and does, particularly in the person of Christ. In other words, what God is going to show in his glory is going to come through the person of Christ. So you must learn to put on Christ. You must wear Christ as a garment. Okay? And you must die to yourself and be alive to Christ. Amen? Amen? In Christ is everything that you're going to get from Almighty God, and it's part of your inheritance, plus some other things that God has just set up for your life before the foundations of the world. <coughs> now, in Christ, his glory has ever shown forth and ever will do everything that God the Father wants for you and for God the Father. He'll do it. He'll keep doing it. All right, John 15, John 17, 5, 5. Can you go over there and look at that? John 17, 5, you're putting that up there for me? And then the next one I want you to do is John 17, 24. Uh, five, and now, Father, glorify me along with yourself and restore me to such majesty, that's a key word, and honor, see, there's that word honor again. What did we say that was? That was, the, that was the brightness of God. That was the shine of Almighty God in your presence as I had with you before the world existed. When did Christ get that? He had it before the world existed, before God made the planet. Okay? Now, 24. Father, I desire that they also whom you have entrusted to me as, as your gift to me may be with me where I am so that they may see that they may see my glory. So from where you are, Jesus wants you to see in Christ. He wants you to see his glory. Now, however, he's going to show that to you. I can't predict that. I'm not even going to try. Because he's, he's got one form of imagination to give to Deborah, but he's got something else to give to Sylvia. And he's got something else to give to me. He's got something else to give to the other Deborah like that. Hello? John Gilpatrick, some of you are familiar with him? John said this years ago. He said, my wife is a seer, and she sees things. And when she comes to me and she says, I see so-and-so, I see this, I see that, he says, I listen. But I don't see, but I hear, he said. I hear things. So she's learned when I go to her and I'm hearing something, I'll say it to her and she'll listen. Okay? Now you have eyes to see and you have ears to hear and you have a heart to receive. Don't cut those off from God and make it work for you. When you accepted Jesus Christ, that's what you've got. Open ears, open eyes, and a heart that's ready for God. And a heart that God wants to keep working in. All right. So you see both of those things. And, and I want you to see something else in the, in the last part of that verse. 24. He says, you love me before the foundations of the world. Okay? So Jesus the Christ was with God the Father before the foundations of the world. And he's asking God to, to restore him to what he had before the foundations of the world. Why? Because he laid it down to come down here. Okay? You, at some time in your life, you've got to go back to God and you've got to say, Father, Take everything away from me that's in the way of me and the foundations of the world that you made for me. I don't want it. I don't want what Mama said. I don't want what Grandpa said. Uh, they, they weren't coming from you. You know, Grandpa was always drinking his wine. They wanted me to drink some wine with him. And he had five, five 50 gallon barrels of homemade wine. 
and we, we drank the oldest one because it had to ferment. Jesus made wine that never fermented, and he did it in seconds. Yes. He didn't need five 50 gallon barrels. <laughs> and he poured out the best wine. Amen. Hello? Yes. Hmm. That's not where we're going today. <laughs> That they may be whole my glory. See, the foundations of the world. Give me back what I have so that they may be whole my glory. Well, God's giving us you know, all that back. In, in, in Hebrews chapter 1, there's an inauguration. And he said in there, he says, he says, I've given you, I've, I've given you everything. You are God, and I put my scepter in your hand. Hmm? See? All right. Now Hebrews chapter one verse three, because I want you to see the brightness of the honor of Jehovah. The other translations they translate Ezekiel ten four different, and they say it was the brightness of the honor of Jehovah. It's the brightness of Almighty God when He puts a shine on you. Oh Lord. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. The brightness of his glory and the express image of his person purged our sin. Then he sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. I know I left out a little bit of that part. Majesty. Is something that, that if you study that word, you can't really grab a hold of it. I keep looking at it and I keep going back and studying it some more, and, and, and I keep saying, Lord, open it up for me. Let me see it, you know. But the majesty of God is, is such perfection, such beauty, such awesomeness. You you just you're a part of that majesty, but you you, you will never be like the master. And have as much majesty as he has. Okay? Now, Hebrews 1 7. Can you go down to that one, please? Hebrews chapter 1, verse 7. Referring to the angels, he says, God, who makes his angels wind and his ministers servants flames of fire. So God is in the process of of bringing the glory to you and making you a flame of fire. And some people are afraid of the fire. When, when I started talking about the fire, it was, it was around 88. And I didn't know anything. And God kept telling me, he said, study, study about the fire, study about the fire. And I had a small group of people. And I kept, uh, 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 you know, I, I read the scripture and I didn't know what to say about it. Uh, you know, I had too many ahs in that. But, but uh, I kept going anyway. And God just kept opening this and opening this. And then he sent me to Russia and he said, set these people on fire. I said, do what? He said, set these people on fire. So I just went out by faith and started touching them. And there were 250 people come up there, you know. And after about 75, I, I said, Lord, I've run out. He says, I have a bam, and he hit me again. And I, I did the rest of the church. He, he done. See, and, and sometimes you get you can get confused about these things if, if you don't just follow God and pay attention. Because the same way you talk about the light, you talk about the fire. Same way you talk about the fire, you're talking about the light. Now the fire, I think, brings that power in the individual transfer than the light does. But the light has, the light is smoother. The light just it's and it's gone. And by the way, they say there's no time in heaven, but I think there is time over there because the day with the Lord is in a thousand years. So the years are still going to be there. 
Only, you know, you, you have to keep up with a thousand years <laughs> to have one day. <laughs> wow. Some of you are older than me, and so you've been around here for almost a whole day. <laughs> Woo! How about that? Mm. All right. Now, here's a couple of things that I have to do before we can leave this, this doxa, because I, I, I can't get into it too much further today. I have to switch over to Isaiah 6. Uh, and I'll do that in a minute. But uh, in Psalm 92, uh, verse 4, see, you have to have the glory and the fire of God in order to do his work. Okay? Either that or you're empty. You have to have, uh, and you have to have a, a constant refinishing, refurnishing, if you will, restoration. Why? Because you give this stuff away. You give it away, and you give it away. And there's, there's times that uh, my wife being a school teacher, uh, God told me one day, he said, nurses and teachers give away more of my presence than anybody else. Why? Because they're always dealing with people, and they're always dealing with kids, and they're always transferring something for themselves. Okay? So he would he would tell me, say, touch that one again, touch that one again. Let's, I said, why are you doing that? He said, I want them full. Okay? Or God is doing something specific for that person. Or God wants to say something to that person. Now, there's a, there's a place in Russia that we went to uh, called Gilinjik. And it's on the Black Sea. And we went there, and it was a small church. Wasn't it? Maybe 70 people in that church. Bigger than this one, you know. But uh, there was a pastor who came in there. And God said, tell him blank, blank, blank. I don't remember what all I told him. But I told him what God was saying. Now that's been 20 years ago. And he ran into my interpreter. She was in Gillingham, and she happened to see him. Not in a church, just on the street, going into a restaurant. And he says, do you ever see Brother Phil? And she says, yeah. And, and he said, tell him what he told me. God is still working that in my life. That was 20 years ago. And I told her, I said, now nah, I know we can't get into Russian right now, but get his name and his phone number so we can go back <laughs> when they open the borders again, you know? Mm. But now just think about it. Sometimes, See, and another man told me, he said, don't move to Russia, because I, I thought we were going to move to Russia. And I said, why? He said, you'll get too familiar with them, and you won't be able to minister to them. Okay? Now just think about that. People you hang out with, they can say something to you, and, well, that's just, that's just limit, you know, or, 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 that's just sensitive, you know. That's, hello. And, and you kind of cast it off. And you don't think as much about that because God's saying it to you, but it's coming through a friend. Okay? But you know what they do in Russia? They write it down. And Pastor Slava, I've been with him 17 years. And have given out and given out in his church. And one of my interpreters wrote me back. She took somebody else in this church and she said, your anointing is still there. I left my anointing in this church. I didn't know that. Hello? Stop. Think about that. 
And if you go and you minister to somebody else, you leave something with them. Because it's a part of God in you. Why not the glory? Why not the fire? Why not the presence of Almighty God? Hmm? Jesus said, when you go into somebody's house, speak peace to that house. And if the peace can't stay there, let it come back to you. What's he telling you to do? That's part of your anointing. What am I doing over there? Here it goes. All right, did you find Psalm 92, verse 4, please? Oh, Lord, oh, oh, oh. I'm sorry. Uh, for you, oh Lord, have made me glad by your work. At the deeds of your hands, I joyfully sing. How great are you, are your doings, O oh Lord. Your thoughts are very deep. Now, I got it from the King James. And I've been in this every night. I ask God for his works. I do not want to do my own works. I don't want to do something that I made up, Tommy. I want to do what God wants. Don't you? Yes. If you don't, if you're not asking him, ask him for his work. Yes. Huh? Yeah. And you know what? King James says, I will triumph in the works of your hand. Amen. I want you to get that today. Now, I need, I need two of you. I need Tony. And I need Teresa. And I need Stanley. And Stanley, I didn't know if you would be here today, but I knew the Lord was calling your name. When I was studying this, and, and these are just, see, these are written notes in my notebook, and I didn't even have time to put them in my, in my typed out stuff, you know. So come on up here, please. You you and, and Stanley. Now, angel spirits, he makes his angel spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. So, Teresa and Tony, the Lord is saying, minister to you because he wants you to be a flame of fire. And he said, the manifestation of that flame and that fire is at work in you willing to do of his good pleasure. So burn in the name of Jesus. Oh! Stay there. Same thing for you. Thank you, Father, for the burning of your spirit that burns in this Son of God. Burn in me, my son. Burn. Burn with a flame of fire that never goes out. I started the fire, I'll oversee the fire, and you keep putting wood on the fire by studying my word. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Now, Stanley, I had something else. Your back is strengthened today. Uh, no more pain, <coughs> discomfort, or trouble in your spine or back ever in Jesus Christ's name. I send you the comfort of the Holy Spirit and fire. Oh, oh! <laughs> in Jesus' mighty name. And I thank you for the straightening of the spine. And he's the one, he said this last night. He said, no more pain, no more discomfort or trouble in your spine or back ever again. I send you the comfort of the Holy Spirit and fire. You receive that? In the name of Jesus. I have trouble with that. Huh? My back. You had trouble with it last night? <laughs> and he's saying no more. He's saying no more. Come on, Chris, put your hands on. Come on. We believe for you to be healthy, healed, comforted by the Holy Spirit, and no more. In Jesus Christ. I'm setting things in order 
says the Spirit of God. And the troubles this year will be a lot, lot, lot less than what you've known up till now. Thank you, my dear, in the name of Jesus. You, you need to claim and the comfort of the Spirit of God. Yes. He says, my rod and my staff, they comfort me. Oh, Hallelujah. Amen. So God's got a way of speaking to you and telling you things that he wants and what he wants to do, and it will come to pass. Amen. 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 Now, I, I had another word that I have to say to you, and my wife had to help me learn how to say this. Obstinate? Did I say it right? Okay. This is a stubborn person. And God says, I want to break that stubbornness off of you. And not to be stubborn against him. But uh, not headstrong. Uh, not, uh, not your will, but allowing God to take your will. You know, some, sometimes... I, I had never done that until I had heard him preach. And then I said, God, uh, if my will is holding back on you, I surrender it right now. Just smash it up and crush it up and give me, give me your will, you know? I don't want my, my class of what I can do. I want what he can do. And, and uh, uh, it's, it's a sign, stubbornness is a sign of not submitted to God in, in their will. Uh, and you're unyielding and you refuse to bend. That's a stubborn person. Back to this thing about the uh, pain bank. Yeah, and it's sad. Uh, it burns sometimes in there. And it's on this right hand side. Okay, whoever that is. Uh, I know you do, but Jane, did you tell me your name was Jane? <coughs> Okay, when I came back and sat down, the Lord said to tell you, uh, he said, I'm making you a man that will stand and never bend. Yes. That the things of God are sure and positive and ongoing in your life. Yes. Keep yielding to him. And uh, the timing for, for effective ministry and all this is in his hands, not yours. Uh, don't push, you know, just keep going and saying, what's next, Lord, you know, or, or whatever else he wants to show you, just keep letting him show you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And uh, I'm hearing the Holy Spirit say, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now let, let's go into Isaiah uh, 6, chapter 6. And then if you would just start that on your overhead with verse 1, and I'm going to read, I think, through 7. Uh, we'll see how far we can get in those verses. Uh, I want to tell you a couple of things about this piece of scripture. Uh, the prophet Isaiah had only one vision occurrence, while other prophets had more than one vision. But he just has this one open vision and sees the Lord, you know. And uh, uh, God's holiness <coughs> is the keynote to Isaiah's whole prophecy. He says, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Okay. Now, God being called the Lord of hosts, Psalm 24 tells you who the Lord of hosts is. The Lord of hosts is, is the Lord of glory. Or the Lord of glory is the Lord of hosts. And see, the Lord of hosts and the Lord of glory are both Jesus. And when, when Satan attacked the Lord of glory and was trying to rub him out, and they didn't know what they were doing and they didn't know the rest of God's plan to raise him from the dead and bring him back to his glory and he's still the Lord of hosts and I, I believe God told Satan said uh, I'm just going to give him all my names and in Colossians chapter 2 verse 
verse 9, it says, uh, uh, the fullness of the Godhead is in Christ. And then it says, and you are complete in Christ. So, at some point or other, you're going to run into the names of God, and you need to pay attention to those names. Because they're all a part of who you are. Amen? Yeah. Praise God. All right. That was the second thing. That this is holiness. This is, you know, when, when, when those angels get together and they start saying, holy, holy, holy. All right. In the book of Revelations, when they sing it and they say, holy, 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 they change octaves. Holy, 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 and they do it again. Holy, 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 and they never say any other word except holy, because he's holy. Now, where holiness is, fire is. You cannot separate. So where holiness is, the presence of God is. You cannot separate from his holiness nor from his fire. All right, all of that being said, the whole earth is the third thing I want you to get from this piece in Isaiah. The whole earth is full of his glory. Not gonna be, it is full of his glory. Already, it's here, it's now, it's God's glory. You can see it in the sun, you can see it in the moon, you can see it in the stars, you See it when you walk outside and see a mountain or a stream or you see a whale or something. You know, there's like four different ways to relate to the glory of God. Anyway, that's another message. But anyway, the whole earth is full of his glory. And then we already looked at Ezekiel. And that was that was the second second thing that I had from Ezekiel. Now I want you to go and read with me Isaiah 6, uh, 1 through 7. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw, I saw also the Lord sitting on a throne. Now that's, that becomes important because in just a little while, they, they're going to take from that throne, around that throne, and, he's gonna, and the, the, the angel's going to pick up with tongs a, a, a coal of fire. Okay? So the fire is around the altar. The fire is not only in God, it's all around the altar. Praise God. Uh, and the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above, above it stood a seraphim. Each one had six wings, with twain he covered his face. With twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried to the other, to another, and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. How much of the earth? The whole earth. Everything about the planet is full of his glory. See that? And yet God wants you to be full of his glory. God made you for his glory. He said to tell you that. He said, tell my people I made them for my glory. Why did it become important? Because there's one place in Isaiah where he says, I won't share my glory with a polluted vessel. And people have tried to take that and say, God won't share his glory. That's a lie. He won't share it with somebody that's going to pollute themselves. Because if you're going to live for the world, God's not going to give you his glory. If you're going to live a holy life and you're going to live for God and, and, and style your life for God and, and study and prayer and all those things, then God's going to fill you up with his glory over and 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 over. It's not going to stop. I get upset with people that say, you already got everything God's going to give you. That's dumb. He only had to use one arm to raise up Jesus from the dead. What's he going to do with the rest of himself? Mm. Mm. All right, I've lost 
track on that stuff. Uh, all right. And verse 3, and, and one cry, you know, holy, 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 is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Verse 4, and the post of the door moved. Now why is that important? Because it's Psalm 24. He's telling you to open the gates. He's telling you to open the doors. And I kept saying, God, where's the gates? Where's the doors? The gates of the city. Open the city to the glory of God. And the doors are like in Revelation chapter 3. He's knocking at the door. If you open to him, he'll come in. Revelation chapter 4. He says, I'll open the door to heaven after you open the door to yourself. Amen. So you got to open the doors. Hello? People that are all bound up, well, you, you, you can pray for me. But, you know, nothing's going to happen when you're all bound. Open yourself up. This is God you're trying to play with. This is God you're trying to get, not some other thing. Huh. All right. And the post of the doors moved at the voice of him that cried. And I haven't figured out what he's crying there. But, and, and the house was filled with smoke. See, it says smoke there. He called the clouds in other places. Mm -hmm. It's the same glory. Okay? And, uh, then, then said I, woe is me. Now this is, this is Isaiah. And I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of the people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Who is the Lord of hosts? He's the Lord of glory. Who is the Lord of glory? You can ask it the other way around. He is mighty. He is strong. He is majestic. He is my redeemer. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's not going anywhere without us. He's coming after us. And he wants to help us and heal us and bless us. And he does it with his glory. When we were on the way to China and, and they came and got me, I was sleeping. Some of you have heard this. Some of you don't know about it. But I was sleeping and they said, there's two up front that are sick. Would you come and pray for them? And on the way up there, I was, I was planning to pray for healing. And the Lord told me, he said, just set them into my glory. Don't pray for healing, just set them into my glory. And I touched that first lady. I told her, I said, God told me just to set you into the glory. He'd take care of everything else. She said, okay. And, and I did. And I went around the other side, and don't I'm in the airplane. I gotta go around. All these people, I went around the other side. I told that lady the same thing. I said, God just told me to set you into glory. When in the glory, God can do anything he wants to. And he healed both of them. So take the limits off of God. Go into Psalm 78. And don't treat God the way Israel did. They kept limiting the Holy One of Israel. Stop it. Take the limits off of him. Where are you limiting God? What are you doing? What are you praying? Now, some people are limiting God with their family because they're involved with everything their children do. And if their children have a need, they're meeting the need instead of letting those children learn and, and use their faith. They're meeting every need for those kids. And they're in the way of God. They're ushering in death, and they mean well, but they're ushering in death. Because they're not giving God the time they need to take care of those children on their own. My son came in, he was, he was 26 years old, and, and the Lord told me, he said, he's a young man. I said, today, you're 26. God said, tell you, you are a young man. You're becoming responsible for you. Now, that doesn't mean everybody that's 26 is responsible for themselves, but uh, he's 50-something years old now, so he's responsible for himself. Hello? 
but when he was a teenager and, and hey daddy, all the kids at school are getting new cars. I said, oh, are you ready to start working? What I gotta work for? Because you gotta get the money to make your payments. Oh, I thought you were gonna buy me one. I said, no way, no way. <laughs> Not happening. And he came back several years later when he got out over his anger at me. And he says, Daddy, thank you for teaching me. Thank you for, Mama showed him how to use a checkbook and all that stuff and how to balance it. You know, keep it right. And we made him work. And he was a waiter for a while in a restaurant and he'd come home one night and he said, I had a, a demon man. I said, what are you talking about? He says, man, he's all dressed in black. And, and he told me that he served the devil. And I became the best waiter that man ever had. I showed him every kind of love that I could to wait on him. And he left me a tip. I made $50 from that tip. Waiting on table. So he said that man thanked him over and over and over again for his service to him. Okay? It didn't matter he was serving the devil. Bob still was being chosen. Rodney, what you doing back there? Uh -huh. The post moved. The smoke came. Then I said, whoa. Are you all done with your woes? Yeah. Woe is me. I am a man of unclean lips. You know, you get yourself in a lot of destruction with unclean lips. You bring destruction on yourself because you, you say things like, I, uh, God can't help me. I'm not worthy of anything. You know, he can't do anything with me. And then God comes along and, and he tells you something about yourself that he's working on. And it's always positive. He doesn't have any negatives. Love never fails. He's always working in love. Hello? Well, I can't get any money. I don't have enough money to pay my bills. He never will. He keeps saying that. You pay all your bills on time. Praise God. All right. I want to finish this up. Verse 6, then flew one of the seraphim unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. Now, some other kind of angels, they could just grab the coal with their hand. But I, I think there's a couple of reasons for him using these tongs. Uh, he didn't want to handle what was going to take the sin out of this man's life. And there's no bloodshed yet from Jesus. But this is a way to purge, purge this man. Not necessarily say forgive him, but he purged him. See, the forgiveness would come later when Jesus shed his blood for us. But he purged, I say. Isaiah felt the fire of God go to his spirit, his soul, and his body. Just like that. If we had to put it in, in, in a, a, a time frame, I'd say a second. The seraphim having a live coal in his hand which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and, and said, Lo, this has touched thy lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. See that? So he comes away from there. He's a different man. He's a different person. Now, not a level difference, but a, a, a dim, dimension of the spirit 
change in his life. He never backed up. He never backed up. He never went out and committed adultery. <clears throat> you don't hear about Isaiah sleeping with other women. Hello. The purity that the angel and the fire of God brought to him, he kept it for the rest of his life. This is the same Isaiah that had the, had the uh, insight to write Isaiah 53, 4, 5. Now, this is the same Isaiah that had the, the, the privilege of writing Isaiah chapter 60 and 61, talking about uh, arise, shine, for thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. The light had come, and the glory of the Lord had risen upon thee. And God started saying that to me back in the back in the nineties, and I was trying to figure out what He was talking about. He was talking about His glory; it had already risen upon me. The glory came to me when I got saved, because the man who prayed for me laid his hands on me, and he was full of the glory. And the Lord just transferred from him to me. And I came away from that altar as high as that chair off the ground. I didn't even know what I had. I would go sit at the feet of, of one of the priests, and, and he was teaching about prayer. And I would, I would just see it. The light was flashing from the glory of God. Hello. Then God started saying, study about it. Keep studying about it. And God said, uh, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10, he said, he said, that glory is your destiny, and you bring many sons to glory. Well, that hasn't happened yet, but we're starting classes where we teach people about the glory, and we teach them how to distribute the glory to other people. Amen? Amen. You got enough of this for today? There's a summary that I'd like to read to you. I got this off, offline. Uh, online, sorry. But uh, Psalm 24, 7 through 10. It calls, calls upon Jerusalem to welcome the Messiah. The original audience of the psalm likely heard these words while being encouraged to welcome the ark return to Jerusalem. And David returned the ark to Jerusalem. And, and that was a, a homecoming for God back to Jerusalem. And see, you, you think about what happened uh, a few years ago when the man that was president uh, opened up Jerusalem back to America, okay? And this is 2 Samuel chapter 6 and Matthew 21, 1 through 11, offers a pre preview of Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem. And his second coming is in Revelation 11, uh, I'm sorry, his second coming is in Revelation 19, 11 <coughs> through 16. At that time, Jesus, the King of glory, will be king over the earth. And that's on uh, Zechariah 14, 9. That, that's just a summary of what's coming. But Jerusalem will see this glory again. And Jerusalem will not fall apart when this glory gets back into, back into Jerusalem. Amen? See, they haven't shut down what the president did back then uh, several years ago. And I don't think they will. I don't think God will allow it. In the Revelations, John's talking about it. He says, I saw the heaven open and behold a white horse. And he that sat upon the horse was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he did judge and make war. So that's going to be when he's getting ready to come back for the thousand years. Okay. And uh, 
something I like to put in here because I believe the Lord told me this. There's people who have lost loved ones at a young age, and God takes those loved ones and He trains them. They're coming back to Him for a thousand years. They're not sitting around heaven walking on a cloud. They're learning how to take care of a horse. And they're learning how to blow a trumpet. And they're learning a lot of other things from the scriptures that they never knew. They're in holy classes of school instruction by David and by Moses and by others. You know, some of those Old Testament prophets and some of those New Testament prophets. Imagine sitting under Paul's teaching all over again. You know, oh, I don't remember ever hearing that. Oh, yeah, there it is. It's crazy. You know? <laughs> And I get it for the first time. Yeah. Oh. All right. I want you to stand up with me because this, this here is not done. <coughs> the reason you can enter into this fire is not only because God wants you in it. But God has sent his blood, and the blood has purged you, and the blood has sanctified you, and the blood has set you apart for Almighty God. And the blood will work again and again to keep you pure, keep you holy. And then the Lord will touch you with the fire of Almighty God. Amen? If we, if we are fortunate enough, if, if we will take the time to confess our sins, He is faithful and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from every Okay? Now, uh, this may be the last time I get to offer this this month, uh, but if you want the fire of God, and if you want God to touch you with a fresh fire, or a fresh anointing, whatever you want to call it, is part of his glory. If he just wants the glory to saturate you again, this is the time to come forward.